You are dirt, dirt. Oh, you are dirt, dirt. Oh. Well, hey everyone. Hope this video finds you well, safe, and at peace. Um, I've been thinking a lot lately about what's happening in society, and I just want to share my thoughts about a question I've been kind of thinking about. Um, who is a hero? We see a lot of industries shutting down, and we're seeing a lot of people being pushed to their limits. And I've been thinking a lot about heroes, and maybe those who do not get the credit they deserve for being heroes. So this brief video i want to tackle the question who is a hero so it's hard to define a hero i was kind of looking it up online um how would you define the term hero miriam webster this is a screenshot from their website um it says like a legendary figure an illustrious warrior a person admired for achievements and noble qualities one who shows great courage could be a leader in a novel um could be an kind of an idol here are some quotes I found. A hero is no braver than an ordinary man, but he's brave five minutes longer. That's by the, you know, the thinker, Ralph Waldo Emerson. A hero is an in ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. That's Christopher Reeve. He was the original Superman, was paralyzed in a tragic accident. I think a hero is any person really intent on making this a better place for all people, Maya Angelou. So how would you define a hero? And I was kind of putting these thoughts together, but I think for me, a hero is one who lives sacrificially, courageously, and victoriously. I don't know, some of y'all may have saw this, seen this picture on Instagram or on news channels or, or not, but this is taken from the Cleveland Clinic Instagram page, and I want to read it to you because our healthcare personnel, our doctors, our nurses, they're heroes. This window has been the most impactful window in my life on days when I watched you, meaning the doctors and the nurses and the staff, work hard to keep me and others alive and able to thank you for the time that you poured into me. And although I will probably never get the chance to pour that same love and support into you, I want you to know that I think you are all are rock stars. I watched some of you have good nights and some bad nights. But what was consistent every night was that you care for people. Today, I leave this ICU a changed person, hopefully for the better, not only because of your medical healing and God's direction and guidance, but with the fact of knowing that there are such wonderful people dedicated to the care and concern of others. The doctors and the nurses on the front lines of this guys are heroes. And if you know of anyone in healthcare, you should be thankful for them. You should let them know how much you're appreciative we need to be praying for our doctors and our nurses and all the staff in the hospitals and the ERs and the emergency, you know, places, the front lines, on the streets even, the first responders, my cousin's a first responder. We need to be lifting them up in prayer because they are heroes fighting this battle. Not only that, a hero lives courageously. This is from Samaritan's Purse. Samaritan's Purse is a nonprofit Christian organization that goes into all the world to help people and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they literally ran into the fire in Italy to help people. They took a medical team over there, set up, you know, kind of like a wartime medical station, you know, in, in a concrete parking lot. And they ran into the fire. They left their families. They left their loved ones to go help complete strangers in the name of Jesus. This is an example of what it means to be a hero. This is just another picture of them praying over, you know, a patient who's struggling. These guys are heroes. So courageously, Christians have been living this way in the midst of sickness for a long time. This is from the website you can see at the bottom of the screen. Um, there was a, basically a book that this guy was reviewing about Christians and how they deal with plagues and illnesses and sicknesses. And so there's a plague of Cyprian. You can look it up. It's in the, you know, the years of around 200 or something like that AD. And Dionysius, Bishop of Alexandria, reported. So this this plague was taken like. 5,000 lives a day, maybe, in Rome and Italy. And this was a Christian. Most of our brother Christians showed unbounded love and loyalty, never sparing themselves and thinking only of one another. Heedless of danger, they took charge of the sick, 
attending to their every need and ministering to them in Christ. And with them departed this life serenely happy, for they were infected by others with the disease, drawing on themselves the sickness of their neighbors and cheerfully accepting their pains. Many, in nursing and curing others, transferred their death to themselves and died in their stead. That blows me away. It completely blows me away how Christians joyfully throughout history have laid down their lives to help people who are sick, who are the least of these. Again, heroes. And finally, the last thing that I think a hero is, is one who lives victoriously. What's our greatest enemy? You see it all over the news right now. You see it all over the society right now. And our greatest enemy is death. That's what we're fighting against. That's what's coming our way no matter what. So we need someone strong enough to deliver us from death. We need someone to help us through that time, through that experience. And Jesus is the answer. Luke 7, 11 through 17 says, Soon afterwards, he went to a city called Nain, and his disciples were going along with him, accompanied by a large crowd. Now, as he approached the gate of the city, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a sizable crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he felt compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. And he came up and touched the coffin, and the bearers came to a halt. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Fear gripped them all, and they began glorifying God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. Jesus stopped a funeral. I don't know if you've been watching the news lately, but some people came and attend funerals right now of their loved ones who have died. There were coffins laid in churches that I saw on, on a news channel that I was watching. And death is our greatest enemy. But in Jesus, death has been overcome. Death has been defeated. Jesus stops funerals. This is actually a beautiful picture of salvation. Ephesians says we were dead, and yet now we are alive if we are saved and we believe in Jesus. Victoriously, he is not here. Not only did he raise people from the dead, he raised himself from the dead. He is not here. He has risen just as he has said, come see the place where he was lying. Those are the angels talking to the women at the tomb. He's not here. He's alive. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same that through death, he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. Not only did Jesus stop funerals, not only did he raise himself from the dead, but he also calls us to live in freedom from fear of death because he's going to be with us. He's going to take us home if we're his. So who is the hero? The hero looks like Jesus. Sacrifice, courage, victory. This is a quote that was in one of the books that I've read. The character of Jesus has not only been the highest pattern of virtue, but the longest incentive in its practice, and has exerted so deep an influence that it may be truly said that the simple record of three short years of active life has done more to regenerate and to soften mankind than all the disquisitions of philosophers and all the exhortations of moralists. What this man is saying is put everything together of all the teachings of good people and they have not had the influence or impact that the life and words of Jesus has ha have had on society and the world. Has Jesus had that impact in your life? Turn to him, trust in him. It's worth it.